Okay. So now we are on the second module of Internet of Things. So this is networking layer protocols actually. We were talking so far at the data link layer. Now we are at the next layer which is networking layer. Okay. Now we are going to go to another protocol and that is RPL. RPL is routing protocol for low power and lossy networks. Now remember, there is this is low power and lossy. It looks very similar to six to 15.4, but it doesn't say wireless anywhere in the title, and it doesn't say 15.4 anywhere in the title. All right, and it doesn't say IPv6 anywhere in the title either. So this is a routing protocol. What is a routing protocol? This is different thing now. Just change your whole mindset. Routing protocol is OSPF. Remember OSPF? That makes a routing table. So how do you make a routing table for Internet of Things? You need the slides? They are right here. So, so basically, routing protocols are, so we are talking about how do you make a route on a, on a small device network. And for that, the protocol is called RPL. So RPL competes with what? OSPF and RIP and so on and so forth. So let's define something. Low power and lossy network is called LLN. And the route, even though they are called routers, but they are really tiny devices. And they cannot use OSPF, OLSR, RIP, AODV, DSR, etc. Now these are all the protocols that are used on the wireless and other places, but we can't use any of them. And if you don't know them, I have put the acronyms at the end. You can look them up on Wikipedia. The idea is that we cannot use them, but that's all. So LLN links have high loss rate, have low data rate, have instability, and therefore the bits are expensive, and the topology changes very fast. So we have dynamically, dynamically created topology. You know, topology might change every minute or every few minutes. Now this covers both wired and wireless networks. And it is actually designed for meter reading originally. So basically you have lots of devices that you want to read sitting at one place. So it is really designed for end to one communication. End to one communication. Sync. Data sync. All the data comes into one place and goes there. That's it. Okay. However, you can do that one to n, the other way around, and you can do one to one. This meter can talk to this meter is necessary. Generally in the in the original application, it was not necessary. So they have made it possible, but it is expensive. This is very cheap. Going to the root is very cheap. But going anywhere else is expensive. N to 1. OK, so the question is, what is 1? Yeah. OK, it will come up in a minute. OK, 1 is actually, it cannot be a meter, because I mean, every meter is going to be a meter, what are they going to do? So it has to be something that is connected to the rest of the world. And um, so, n to 1. Multiple LN instances on the same physical network. So you might have many instances on the same physical network. Okay, So you might have the same devices, same wireless thing, but there might be different places the information is going. So I'm going to introduce some concepts. First of all, DAG. DAG is directed acyclic graph. And directed acyclic means directed means there are arrows. You see here arrows. And acyclic means there is no cycle. And it is a graph. So this is a DAG. Now, if you have a destination-oriented DAG, that means there is one destination that everybody wants to get to. That means there is one route. Then it is called a do DAG. Destination-oriented directed acyclic graph, do DAG. If there are more than one route, then it is a DAG. If there is only one route, it is a do DAG. And when you say up, up is always going towards the root. So this link is up. Can you see that link? It looks like going down. But it's not going down. It's going up because you're going towards the root. All right? And down is obviously going away from the root. And objective function, so basically, how do you know whether you are close to the root or away? There is some function which the designer must have decided that, okay, I want latency to be minimized. I want energy to be minimized. I want whatever to be minimized. So that is not specified. Whatever you decide by that function, you give it a number. 
you give a distance and so that's how you figure out how far you are from the root and you generally talk to the people who are closest to you and then they talk they send it over to the root so the objective function is minimize energy minimize latency the rank is your distance from the root so generally what you do is everything is just generally in, in, in made in teasers so whatever distance you have let's say your power is 1.3 millijoules or whatever right you divide that by some unit some minimum number and you make it an integer so that is your distance so rank that is your rank then rpl instance is one or more doodags so this is one rpl instance it has two doodags one doodag which has this root and one doodag which has this root so a node may belong to multiple rpl instances and you could have one more rpl instance and the same node could belong to that one too because you know that is being managed by more than you know one people whatever all right so doodag doodag id each doodag has an id which is basically the ipv6 address of the root so it has 128 bit id as long as the root doesn't change the id doesn't change doodag version every time the doodag changes its shape it's a new version you know right now this is the version and 5 minutes later the root is same but the shape has changed so that's a new version so the version is changed from 5 to 6 to 7 so the root keeps track of that number and in all the announcement it says look i am using version number 5 if somebody has the old information version number 4 they have to update right away doodag version number current version of the doodag every time a new dag is doodag is computed the same root the version is incremented all right everything is clear on this slide yeah because this is all designed for the root All right, goal. Now we talk about objective function. Objective function is energy and latency. Goal is where you want to go. All right. Generally, most people want to go to some wired network, and so that is your goal. Your goal is to get onto the wire from wireless or from this little um, electrical wiring to you know internet. That's your goal. Right. So goal is different. Don't confuse goal with the objective function. This will be clear in the exam. Right. Very easy to ask. Goal is latency, no. Goal is where you want to go. Objective function is what you want to minimize. Alright? Now, if you can reach the goal, it is called grounded. So this doodag is grounded because it is connected. If it is not connected to the goal, you cannot reach the goal, then it is called floating. I am still looking for the destination. I can't reach there. Then parent, obviously parent is where your arrow goes and child is where the arrow comes from. So each parent may have multiple childs and he may have multiple parents as well. Okay. Um, and then uh, generally the parents will not be in the same doodag. You might have a parent in this doodag and another parent in another doodag so that there is no cycles of any kind, right? something like that. Parents, sub doodag is sub tree. Actually sub tree is a misnomer because trees don't have direction. But um, if you just take the thing underneath you, that is your sub doodag. All right. And then there are two kinds of nodes. Some nodes keep the whole routing table and they know how to go from A to B. Some nodes are very simple. They don't keep any routing table. All they know is who is their parent. They are like child, children, you know, little children and then some adult children, right? So little children, all they know is their dad and mom and that's it, nothing more. And so whenever you give a packet, they give it to their you know, parent. And the parents give it to their parents. The whole, by the way, whole doodag has to be non-storing or storing. So, so basically when, so the, it will come up in a minute. So even though you might be, you know, it's, it's adult enough to be remembering the whole table, if you are part of a doodag where everybody is non-storing, you have to be non-storing. Okay, except for the root. Root is the only one which has a little bit of smartness and it is always storing. So the rest of the network, so the whole doodag is either storing or non-storing depending upon whether everybody keeps a routing table. If they don't keep the routing table, they just need to know who their parent is. So there are four messages which are designed, or five messages which are designed to find out, um, to form this table. Actually all we are doing is spanning tree in some sense, right? So 
So there are four methods. First is do drag information object, which is the downward multicast. So we say that which is like a beacon. We say, look, I am part of this do drag, and the it is grounded, and it, we are all storing. If anybody wants to join, please let me know. That's a DIO. Beacon is um, coming from the access point. In this case, DIO is coming from all the all the leaves. And from the access point as well, actually. It's coming from everybody. Everybody is saying that I'm part of this DIO. I, I'm part of this DAG, do DAG. If you want to reach Germany, here's the do DAG, and you know it is grounded right now, it's connected. So and if you don't hear any announcement, then you can send a request which is called DIS. DIS is just is there any do DAG here? I want to go to Germany, you know, like that. DIS. And DAO is the object, which is actually a request which says, can I please join your family? Can I join you? That is DAO. And then DOAAC, the answer to that DAO, which says, well, sorry, you cannot join. I'm already overloaded. Or sorry, you cannot join because, you know, this, 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 whatever reason. So that act is called yes or no. And consistency check, consistency check has to do with the security, which we will not discuss. So anyway, so generally a new guy will come in, will send a DIS. It will get a DIO from somebody, and then it will say DAO, and then we'll get DOA act. So, is there anybody here? Then they say, yeah, we are here, and this is the thing. And they say, can I join you? And then they say, yeah, you can join. Clear? It is quite possible that you don't have to send DIS because if you wait long enough, you will find a DIO, and then you can do only three steps. Four messages. This you got to remember, right? Clear? All right. So now let us give you an example. There are five nodes and um, they have no connections, no DAG, nothing like that. So the first one says, look, I am the root. And by the way, root is programmed beforehand. You know, not everybody can be a root. Everybody is not connected to the ground and so on and so forth. So some, some nodes are, have capacity to become root and they're programmed like that. So they will say, oh, I, am, I have a DAG and this is the, the DAG ID and, and, and uh, whatever, right? All of these guys will listen to it and they will find their distances and all of them will actually try to join. Regardless of the distance, they will try to join. Because that is the minimum distance right now for them. And so all of them will send their um, request DAO and they might even join it. But then in the next round, what will happen is, what will happen is when they hear the uh, DIOs from B and C, they will find them closer to B than A. So they will say, no, no, I don't want to go and you know join that guy over there. It's very far. The rank here is much lower if I join here. So then D will join B and so on and so forth. So they will disconnect from A and connect to nearest neighbor. So that is what the process is basically. The process is listed here. B, C, D, E here and they join. Um, and then they, they send a DAO. They're not all shown, but basically they send a DAO and they all they accept. Then B and C multi-class DIOs, and D hears them, and it knows that I am, you know, so much distance. You know, D says that I am distance one from B, and distance two from C. It says to B, "Can I be your child, please?" And then B says yes. So at the end, this is the do that which is found. A accepts all, huh? No, because D. D. Okay, so here's the thing. There is a slight difference in the picture shown here. So the picture says that everybody hears, but picture says only two people send the DO. Actually, I have to change it. So everybody sends DAO and everybody gets the DO app. So at that point, the picture would look just a you know, tree I mean, with one, you know, everybody connected to A. So you connect to whatever right now currently is the minimum. Currently, if you have nobody else to join, you just connect to A. But a minute later, when B announces, then you figure out that B is, if I go through B, then I'm at a distance of two, because B says I'm at a distance of one, if anybody wants to join, and this one says I'm at a distance of three or four or whatever, right? And if I go through B, it will be less, so then you change. Yeah, D will release the connection from A and connect to B. Similarly, C will re E will release the connection from A and connect to C. Yeah, right, yeah, there's a difference between dotted arrow and the fixed one. The dotted arrows are messages, the fixed ones are connections, are associations. 
So this is now B is a child of A, C is a child of A. This one is not a child, this is just a message going. This is complete uh, three, complete doodag here. So the D is a child of B, B is a child of A, like that. All right, now data forwarding. So now if you want to send from N to 1, basically you change it, set the address and it will give it to your parent and the parent gives it to their parent, it will go to the root, no problem, right? Now if you want to send from A to B, how do you do? There are two cases, storing and non-storing. If you store, then you just say, okay, who is my common parent? If I want to go from A to B and you know the whole table, you know who is the common parent, you send it to the common parent and go down from there. If you're non-storing, you don't know anything about who is where, all you do is you give it to the root and the root knows where it is. Right? So everybody sends it to the root and then the root puts the whole source route, says, okay, it will go to here, here, here and it will go to B that way, all right? And then you want to broadcast from the root, that's very easy, broadcast from the root, the root actually, if it is storing, then everybody knows who to give, who their children are. If it is non-storing, then you don't know who your children are. <laughs> Can you believe that? You only know your parents, but you don't know your children. So basically the root has to tell you who your children are and then you can send it to them and they can send to them and so on and so forth. All right, so that is non-storing. That brings us to the end of RPL. RPL is the routing protocol, just like OSPF, which is used for these simple devices, and all it does is forms a kind of a spanning tree, and by forming the spanning tree, actually it is much simpler than a spanning tree, but basically that's what it does, and then everything goes to the root, and, um, and then you don't have to remember any routing table. All right, that brings to the end of this module. And we talk about two different protocols, six low pan and RPL. They are not competing, they are different. RPL is the routing protocol and six low pan is a compression protocol. The main thing about six low pan is how to compress, how to make things smaller. So basically it's an adaptation protocol and RPL is designed to find the route. That's the end. And um, this is the list of reading list that I, you should probably read all of these. Okay, and that's the key. If you don't read, then just from the lecture you forget. And when you read it, you will remember. And then I have again changed the reference list. These you don't have to read, but if you have to work on this topic, then you go to the references. So that's how I have done. Okay? All right. <laughs>